Um, in Francisco's case, I started off by asking what were his uh, initial problems, challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say are your principal challenges at the moment? Well, I think for uh, Wikipedia, for no. Wikipedia uh, the, the biggest challenges that we're facing is exploring um, how, can we, how can we contribute to the growth of Wikipedia in all the languages of the developing world. So we're very, very strong in all the European languages. We're strong in uh, Chinese and Japanese. Uh, but beyond that, there's a pretty sharp fall off. Um, and it's for all of the reasons that you would expect. Um, it has to do with um, access to broadband internet, access to computers at all. It has to do with uh, literacy rates. It has to do with a whole host of factors. However, we, you know, we see right now strong growth in India. So uh, we are for the first time opening our first office outside the US in India. Um, the, the Indian press got very excited about this because very often people with a sort of superficial knowledge assume that we're something like Google. So they thought we were going to do uh, you know, 4,000 employees in a back office uh, somewhere uh, doing back office transactions or something. And no, it's actually a small office of community support. So it's, uh, it's people to help the community with uh, some of its technical, technical solutions. You know, if you're trying to type on an English keyboard and you're trying to type in Indian languages, no there's difficulties and there are some technical solutions to that, but we currently don't support all of them just because we haven't done it yet. And so yeah. that's the kind of thing we're emphasizing. Uh, PR support, you know, helping them do outreach, uh, modeling some of the things that work very well uh, in Europe, for example, where the community, uh, particularly in Germany, uh, has held Wikipedia academies. They go out, they talk to professors, they recruit people. So that's a big challenge. Um, and, and, you know, when we think about that, we, we, we're focusing first this year on India uh, simply because it, it seems like low-hanging fruit. Yes. Uh, there's actually large IT industry. Uh, the Indian communities are already quite large and growing very quickly. But when we, when we turn our attention to the African languages, it's, uh, it's much more complicated. It's a huge, even more complicated. It's a even more yeah. complicated. But just talking about India for a moment, since mm -hmm. you mentioned it, yep. one of the big challenges in India is that when you look at the number of journalists mm -hmm. and which caste background they come from, mm -hmm. there are hardly any journalists who come from a backward caste, let alone an untouchable caste. Yes, yes. And therefore journalism is dominated by people like me who come mm -hmm. from the upper castes. Yes. So the challenge that you're going to have, I think, is how do you prevent mm -hmm. Wikipedia from becoming yet another organ of mass propaganda based on well, upper caste values? So there is that. There is a very interesting question. Um, I, I remember I, I was in uh, India uh, not long ago, and we, ha we had a community event and a press conference there. Uh, and I was sitting with uh, Sue Gardner, who's the executive director of the foundation. This, I believe, was her first trip to India ever. Um, I always feel like um, until you've lived a lifetime in India, you don't understand India. And even if you've lived there for a lifetime, you don't understand either. <laughs> But I just said to her, um, you know, quietly, I actually sent her a text message. I said, just take a look at the skin color of the journalists and of the Wikipedians. Mm. Uh, because the journalists were from a certain uh, class and the Wikipedians are much darker and from a much more diverse background. And I think from people outside India, these, uh, these distinctions are all sort of invisible. Uh, but within India, it is important. It's quite visible. So I think that's a part of it. Because it's community written uh, and because it's in all the languages, um, I think there is a great opportunity to overcome some of those things. And in part because everyone's behind a computer screen. And so whatever biases you may have about race and color and class, they don't necessarily come through. At the same time, of course, it's true uh, everywhere, and I don't think there's an easy solution to this, that the people who write encyclopedias are people who are well-educated and literate. Um, and that's not a bad thing, of course, but it does mean that we all have to be very conscious as we're writing and as we're discussing, as we're thinking, um, you know, uh, we, we come with our own inherent biases. A, a slightly different example, uh, sort of a humorous example. Um, one of the things we know about the Wikipedia community in English is that we are a bunch of computer geeks. Mm -hmm. uh, and as computer geeks, we definitely come from, you know, white male, uh, from a certain technical bent, a certain view of the world, diverse in its own way, but we are this. So when the royal wedding happened, uh, someone created an article about Kate Middleton's dress and it was immediately nominated for deletion and people said this is silly how can you have an article about a dress and so forth and I said to them look we have over 100 articles about different very obscure Linux distributions mm -hmm. uh, small software projects this is one of the most famous dresses in the world I said, in fact why don't we have articles about 
more articles about the history of fashion. There should be at least 100 famous dresses that change the course of fashion. Why don't we have that? Well, it's because we're a bunch of computer geeks, you know? Uh, and so that was, that was an accepted view. People said, oh, yeah, actually, that's correct. A few people said, that's still stupid. But uh, for the most part, people get it. That but Jimmy, you've just, you just illustrated something, and that is that while you keep talking about the community being self-regulating and so on, you have actually had a huge influence in terms of creating the community, shaping the community, and you're still, in a way, the guardian of the community, aren't you? Well, I mean, the thing is, I, um, I do have influence, but uh, I don't have direct authority. Right. Um, and so that's a really interesting thing. Um, I, uh, I have sometimes joked, it's sort of like um, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi when uh, Darth Vader, you know, used the Force Luke. I'm more powerful the less power I have. <laughs> right. um, it's important because if I were top down and in conflict with the community, uh, they would rebel and, and who knows how things might go. But instead, I'm just there as a as I try to be uh, a guardian of the values uh, and encourage people. Thank you. Um, I see a hand there in the middle, and I see a hand here, and I see a hand here. And there are some hands in the back which I'll come to. Please. I am, uh, I am uh, developing a new business um, in, uh, in the field of healthcare for emerging countries through new business model and empowering the, the young leader generation. I just come back from Seattle where I am working on the, with the Gates Foundation on a huge project to give access to the emerging world uh, in the field of health for infectious diseases, HIV, TB, and so on. You spoke about the patent exchange and incentive. I should like very much to know a little bit better about that, which is a great blocking point in our healthcare activity. Yes, well, I mean, one of the things that's been interesting, and so I, I, I am not an expert on healthcare or patents in the drug field, so what, but what I do know about, I think may have some insights that people who are experts there could reflect upon. Um, you know, in, in the software world, I was just at, a, at a, a conference in London the other day where the question was raised, uh, what about software patents? Uh, should, they, should they be stronger? Should they be more? Should they be not exist at all? And it was really astonishing to see the level of uh, agreement in the room uh, that software patents should be abolished, uh, that they cause more trouble than they're worth, uh, that they're a hindrance on innovation, not a, um, a, um, a way of fostering and promoting innovation. Uh, and some of the businesses who got up and spoke are businesses who I was even surprised because I thought, well, oh, well, this guy's going to defend patents because he just made a billion dollars off of patents. No, he said, actually, the patents that we have, we felt were defensive because if we didn't do it, someone else would. Mm -hmm. And additionally, patents have caused us so much trouble. So in our field, uh, there's a strong sentiment against patents because of the way we do things. Now, in the drug industry, it's a different industry and it operates in a different way. And I'm sympathetic to the idea that if someone uh, needs to invest $1 billion up front to develop a new drug, that they need to have some protection so they can realize the, the money, otherwise they won't invest in the first place. I think that's important. But at the same time, I think that we are driven by arguments that are non-economic. Um, so not all economists are mad. Uh, we're driven by arguments uh, surely from power and influence uh, so that patents, rather than being designed and really thoughtfully constructed to say, yes, we need to encourage some innovation, but we also think that the public domain is valuable in the long run, um, we've lost that. Instead, what we have is a lot of companies with huge amounts of money um, wanting longer and stronger patent terms, uh, not because they need it in order to innovate, but because they need it because they can then make even more money. What, where I think is interesting is that when you have a lot of patents in a certain area and they're getting in people's way um, and people begin to realize actually all we're doing is suing each other. We see this a lot now in the mobile sector. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, lots of things are being held back because people are suing each other over completely idiotic patents. Um, I think there's an opportunity for someone to come in and say to, to all the relevant players, look, actually, let's develop some legal tools. Let's set, develop some licenses that allow us to overcome these incentives. In the software world with copyright, not patent, this is what the Creative Commons licenses and the, and the, the uh, Free Software Foundation licenses do, is they give us a way to come together under an understood social framework where we can say, yeah, actually, we are going to give something up, but we're going to get a lot more back from it. And I think that that model, that way of thinking, could be very useful in the patent world. Yeah. Uh, Maya, first, please, and then Dick. Uh, yeah. 
Thank you. Um, my name is Maya Gopal. I would like to come back to your very beginning of the talk and what I perceive to be a bit of a hostile kick towards <laughs> your former speaker, which surprised me because I would like to know where you see the big difference in your worldviews. When I picked up the patterns between both of what you're promoting, it was insider power, eye level participation, access for all, wisdom of the many rather than top down expertise of one or two people, and against monoculturalism. So I wonder what triggered you to be so... <laughs> well, um, well b before you answer yeah. that, can I just take Dick's question as well? Okay. Or comment, or whatever it is. Dick at the back, just behind Maya. Yes, yes. Got uh, Dick Omohundro. Uh, could you comment on Julian Assange and WikiLeaks? Okay, great. Um, well, so I, I think you, you are absolutely correct. And in fact, uh, as I was listening to him talk, uh, I mean, another place where we would absolutely be in agreement is... Uh, that that farm subsidies in the EU food, and in yes, the US are a, a travesty. I mean, they're, they're a, an injustice causing all kinds of problems in the world. W what I mean by this is this idea that, um, that self-interest is evil uh, is itself an evil idea. Uh, this idea that, that we should accept, um, what was his word uh, for Poverty, uh, decent poverty, decent poverty is, is an outrage to me. Well, we he, shouldn't he, he might argue that you have decent poverty because you have established Wikipedia with only 20 million budget last uh, year. Fair enough. Versus we, we, can, we can have an intellectual debate about it. Uh, my point is, um, I, I think that it's really important that we understand and recognize individual rights uh, and that a lot of mumbo jumbo about uh, the dignity of poverty is incredibly dangerous to progress. And I think that it's, uh, you know, it, it's a very different, I, I didn't mean to be hostile. I felt he was hostile when he sort of ranted against Ayn Rand for a minute. And I thought, have you even read this? Do you even know what you're talking about? Maybe he has, I don't know. But I think if, my, I feel my work will have been done here if everybody in this room finds this to be a very interesting puzzle and goes and reads Ayn Rand to find out what I'm talking about. Well, he actually has four doctorates, but anyway, that's a, that's a different matter. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I think, John, you, you had the microphone next? Uh, yeah, it, um, in fact, I want to elaborate on oh, just... Oh, wait. No. Oh, WikiLeaks. Okay. Oh, WikiLeaks, yes. Oh, yes, um, you haven't answered that point. Right, yet, so sorry. WikiLeaks. So, of course, I mean, the first thing to say is that WikiLeaks is not a wiki and has nothing to do with us whatsoever. Um, it's... Uh, what a pity! <laughs> <laughs> WikiLeaks is... Uh, uh, the idea of a wiki is a website anyone can edit and anyone can come and collaborate and participate. And I think when he started, he had the idea of a wiki, uh, but now of course the website's completely locked down and all you can do is uh, send things in and he'll publish them if he feels like it. Um, so here's the, here's the way I feel about WikiLeaks. Uh, I think that in any open society, in any vision of a free world that we might have, it's incredibly important and incredibly valuable that people who have evidence of wrongdoing have a means to come forward with that. And I think that we should be, uh, we should morally praise people who do so even if they're breaking the law. Um, assuming that there's actual injustice, assuming that it isn't just spilling secrets to be doing it. Uh, at the same time, I would agree with Amnesty International and Reporters Without Borders that they need to be very, very careful that when they are releasing things, uh, that they're doing so in a way that is mindful of the risks to innocence. Um, just to give uh, a, an example that's uh, partly hypothetical but partly not hypothetical is if you imagine a... Um, uh, a, a, someone in Afghanistan who is building schools for girls, a noble activity and a dangerous activity, suppose that they are mentioned in some CIA document as, as that they are doing good work and we should think about ways to support them. All of a sudden, that person is now at risk of being uh, regarded as a CIA plant, a CIA front, even though they didn't do anything wrong whatsoever. Uh, in fact, the CIA, in this rare instance, probably didn't do anything wrong either. They just said, this is good work that's going on. Uh, it, it's important. I think that if you just dump documents online randomly, you're going to get some people killed. Now, having said that, I think that he has tended to sort of overstate in his rhetoric what he's actually done, and that he has worked with responsible journalists to go through the material as best they can. So I have mixed feelings. Uh, I, I, think, um, I think he's his own worst enemy, in fact. Um, he's a difficult character. So. Ladies and gentlemen, we have four minutes left, and what I would like to do is to take all questions and comments first. And then, if there's time, still let you respond to it. Sure. That's okay, right. two, two points. First, I want to elaborate on the intervention of this lady that I, I support fully. I will argue that there's no real difference between your work and Father Franz Vanderhoff's work. Even we can argue you are more extreme because you are 
on charity, okay, you are not on business, and in <laughs> fact, I will claim you are a hero of decent poverty, because you could be now, today, as rich as Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> and so on, you can have 20 billion dollars of asset today with Wikipedia, and you choose to have <laughs> <laughs> nothing, so you are a hero of decent poverty, <laughs> point one. Point two, oh. I think that um, here in, Zerm in the Zermatt Summit, the nice thing is that there's many different sort of people who are serving common good, okay? Mm, yes. And we have to um, discover each other, to work with each other, to have a to, to tolerate each other, even if we are very different sometimes. And if you, you want or not, you are on the same boat, then fair trade, then ethical rating, then ethical investment, then sustainable development, and all of this. And Wikipedia is a, a, co a cornerstone of all this movement to serve common good by different ways. So, Thank you. Yeah. 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 This is really important. So, okay. I, I agree with you completely. Uh, my point is part of tolerating each other in a responsible, rational way is to point out where we differ so that we can all reason about it and come to a stronger position. So. Very good. Thank you. Um, I see a lady there in the middle. I don't know who that is. The lady with, no, just next to you. Yes, please. Everybody who has their hands up, I'll come to. Yeah, and Just I'll try to be. I'll try to be very quick. Yes, great. I think great it's necessary. absolutely marvelous what you've done, and the separation between money and creativity is a key idea, as well as community. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm not criticizing any of it, but the model rests on the fact that people have talent and free time, something that people don't have in Africa. Uh, and it, it rests on the, not only the contributors, but also your funds. Even in those small things, that means people have 20 or $30 to give to you a year. Absolutely. Uh, in terms of the long ter your long-term thinking, do you see any way of uh, transforming your model to have some sort of sustainable element in it, um, to have some way to make its own money so that it can be uh, can, that it can actually grow uh, to, to everywhere. Good. Um, and there's a hand at the back. Is that uh, Mr. Palazzo again? Yes. yes. I'll come to you again. We could read a lot about the role of Facebook and Twitter for the revolution in the Arab countries. I have read nothing about the role of Wikipedia. Was there one? Could you comment on this? Okay, great. Okay. I think and we won't have time. If we no, we won't have time. But let's okay. at least listen <laughs> to the questions. Yes. Or comments. Um, hello, my name is Deb Nisrael from Switzerland. My question is about China. Google now regularly gets into trouble in China. I want to know how Wikipedia addresses that and how you see freedom of expression evolving there. Good. And there's still a hand. There are two hands at the back, no, but you. there's nobody in front. Good. The last two there's questions at the back, please. Now, there are real cultural clashes in the world. And not only that, you also have many communities you know, in the Arabic world, the Islamic world, in China, who feel that this um, global f information free-for-all puts them at a disadvantage, that it's because the, the West is so much more powerful that it's always a, a Western viewpoint which dominates. So I'm just wondering how, you, how do you deal with these conflicts? I mean, for example, the uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict. I mean, are you not overwhelmed with um, people complaining every day and, having, and insisting that the entry is wrong? Um, how actually can your small community deal with these enormous conflicts? Uh, and the last question or comment or whatever at the back, please. There's still one more or is that it? Lovely. Okay. okay. Great. Uh, I guess they're all kind of combined by the question of editorial discretion and uh, so on on the one hand and responsibility on the other. Uh, yes. So sustainable, we think the charity model is sustainable. We get a lot of donations. Um, we, we sometimes license our trademark for certain uses, but we're very cautious about that. Uh, China, we've taken a very strong stand uh, with China, we don't compromise whatsoever with China. Um, we, I go, we have friendly relationship with the, the ministry there. Um, they don't compromise either. We were completely banned in China for three years, uh, and now they filter certain pages from Wikipedia. We can't stop them from doing that, but we don't participate in it, and we criticize it all the time. Israel-Palestine, yeah, people fight a lot. <laughs> Just so you know, I was in China a few weeks ago. I couldn't get Wikipedia. Just oh, really? information. Hmm. Uh, it's probably a certain didn't... page. They filter some pages, so if you oh, try to read about Ai Weiwei in China, you won't. If you try to read about... Uh, I was trying to get into an Indian page. Nothing to do with China at all. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you. a very interesting project or series of projects and a very interesting presentation to us. May I ask you, please? Thank you very much.